Hello there, lovely ladies, and welcome to the Tenacious Woman podcast. I am your host, Misty Knight, and I'm so excited to be back with you guys today for our second season. I hope you guys all had a wonderful summer. I know we did. We thoroughly enjoyed having the kids at home. It was very short and a lot of fun. Um, You know, when I take the summer with the kids, we typically go to the pool a lot. So we went to the pool at least once or twice a week and uh, took the boat out to the lake every weekend. So it was just an absolutely wonderful summer. We got to do a lot of fun stuff and I hope you did as well. So today I wanted to talk with you guys about barriers to hearing God's voice. You know, I don't know about you, but I have gone through several seasons in my life where I just feel like I can't hear him. Like he is not speaking to me. We don't have this connection and things are just kind of wonky, right? So I thought, you know, this would be a really great post coming out of summer a lot of times when we're in summer, we're not in routine. And when we're not in routine, we're not spending our time with God. And some of these things kind of creep in and will prevent us from hearing God's voice. So I thought it would be a great topic for coming back out of summer. So let's try dump Let's jump right in and talk about the 10 barriers to hearing God's voice. So the first one is worries. When we worry, our mind is preoccupied and focused on everything that we're worrying about. So God speaks to us when we are asking him questions, when we're praising him, And we're not doing either of those things when we are worrying. So we need to check ourselves to see if we are worrying about things. Very closely related to that is complaining or grumbling. You know, this is when we are whining about everything that's going wrong. We're feeling sorry for ourselves. We're not seeing any of the blessings that we do have in our lives. And that prevents us from hearing from God. The Egyptians did this in the desert with the manna that God was giving them to eat. When we complain and grumble, God might rebuke us and tell us that we're doing something wrong, but he likely will not talk to us to give us more information and to bless us. So. That's definitely something we need to check to see if we are doing that uh, complaining or grumbling. Next would be resentment. And this is definitely one that I've struggled with most of my life. It came from not uh, expressing when things were wrong and holding it in. And the more we hold it in, the more we're building up resentment towards those people who've done something and we haven't told them that they've done something. So resentment comes from feeling like you've been treated unfairly or harboring bitterness in our heart. The next one would be envy. This is wanting what other people have, not being grateful for what you do have, or just not even seeing that all the things that you've been blessed with. When we envy, it's a roadblock to God talking with us. The next one would be fear. Uh, You don't trust God or don't think he has your best interest in mind. This is also something I've struggled with. I would say all 10 of these have been struggles for me in some time or another, you know, and they kind of build upon each other. It may start as a worry and then it turns into complaining and then it turns into resentment. And then we envy other people who have what we don't want to have or what we want to have. And it just keeps moving on from there, right? It kind of builds up and works into these other things. So it makes sense that we would have experienced more than one of these. Uh, But when we talk about fear, 
a lot of times we know that God is good and that he has our best interest in mind. And we believe that he has created everyone for great purposes, but maybe it wasn't just for me. Maybe it just wasn't for me. And that can creep in. That's a lie of the enemy that creates that fear within us that maybe his promises are for everyone else, but not me. The next one would be weakness. You think that your prayers aren't working or that blessings um, or answered prayers and hearing from God must be for everyone else, but not for you. So really closely related to that fear, but a little bit different in that we just are weak. We don't believe that we are enough for those things to happen. The next one would be conformity. Oh, this one hurts, right? Living the way that the world lives in contradiction to the Bible and not repenting or seeing a problem with it. So a lot of times we may see that we're doing something wrong and we realize that we're doing something wrong and then we repent, but we still struggle with it. That's not really what this is talking about. This is talking about living the way that the world lives and not seeing a problem with it. So, you know, for me, it was smoking and drinking and cussing and doing all of those things and thinking that it wasn't a problem. And so over the years, God has been showing me that these things are a problem and now it's time to work on it. The next one would be vanity, being worried about what other people might think of you or how you might look. If you become that Jesus freak, that's always talking about Jesus or being a goody two shoes was something I heard a lot growing up. Uh, you know, we, we worry about what other people will think about us. And if we are worried about that and we have that vanity that affects our behavior, which can prevent God from speaking to us. The next one is our past. We think that because of what we've done in the past, that we aren't worthy or deserving a relationship of God. And you might feel guilty or disqualified. If we feel that way, that is definitely a barrier to being able to hear from God. We need all of these barriers down in order to be able to have that two-way conversation with him. And then the final one is just simply not taking the time to listen. So many times we are praying and pouring our heart out and we just move on to the next thing. We don't sit there and allow time for the spirit to move and to come in and speak to us and to give us advice and tell us what to do and answer our questions. And when we don't allow that time, then it's harder for God to sneak it in and send us a message when we're just driving down the road, which does happen if you're talking to him. But we need to allow that time in our quiet time to allow him to move and to speak to us. So many of these things are negative emotions and they tend to be pervasive, meaning they run deep and they're hard to just turn around and flip upside down because it's a symptom of a deeper wound that we haven't healed. And that could be from an abusive parent, an abusive ex, or maybe even just a hard word, harsh word that was spoken to you that cut you to the core, but all of them can be healed. And I share with you how to heal these wounds, how to hear from God and become all that you were created to be in the tenacious woman blueprint. It's a 12-week course and coaching hybrid that distills proven methods and God's design for healing into specific actionable steps that you can implement into your daily routines. It's designed to help you quickly and permanently unpack all your trauma baggage, rebuild your self-confidence, and move forward in life so that you can accomplish all that God's created you to accomplish. You can learn more or sign up today at atenaciouswoman.com 
forward slash tenacious dash woman dash blueprint. You can also just go to the homepage at atenaciouswoman.com and scroll down to the Tenacious Woman Blueprint. Registration is open for the next couple of weeks. So head on over there and join us before it closes and we start that 12-week program. I love you guys and I hope you have a wonderful day.